This is I Cycle Niagara at the Big Move Cancer Ride for the GCN Show. Yay! Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, we try and work out whether or not the UCI are just about to suck all of the fun out of gravel racing, or could their new Gravel World Series actually be a good thing? I mean, if there are new rules on sock length and facial hair, then perhaps. Mm. We've also got some big news from Wahoo and some generally awesome cycling tidbits from around the world. Cycling tidbits? Like, could be like a new feature, man, and I like it. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that it's not easy being the favourite. And no, this isn't just trying to make you feel sorry for Dan, but actually how the Dutch women's team and the Belgian men's team both failed to deliver at the World Championships despite overwhelming odds. Yeah, all eyes were on the two super teams, but both came up short. However, taking nothing away from the amazing sprint of Italy's Elise Balsamo and Julian Alaphilippe's masterful display of attacking riding in the men's road race. Yeah, you can have the best tactics in the world, but sometimes you just don't have the legs. But in your case, it's usually both, isn't it, Sai? <laughs> yeah, right, fair enough. We also learned that Wahoo have just launched their new indoor training platform called System, and they say it's the most complete app for endurance athletes. That's right. It's got structured workouts. It's got race simulations. It's got instructor-led workouts. It's got training plans. It's got off-bike strength sessions. It's got yoga sessions. It's got mental coaching. And this is the new home for Sufferfest as well, because much of this app builds on the success of that previous platform, but taken to another level, apparently. Now, one of the big news items from last week is that the UCI announced that it owns Gravel. Well, they didn't technically say that, but they have announced that there will be a Gravel World Championships and a Gravel World Series. Yes, this is the kind of announcement that strikes fear into the hearts of cyclists everywhere. Gravel is cool. The UCI is not. Gravel is free-spirited. The UCI is not. Gravel has very few rules. The UCI, well, I mean, it's got a library to house all of its rule books, and at the centre of it is a shrine devoted to more rules. Let's backpedal a bit first, shall we? The UCI haven't said too much yet, but what they have said is that as of 2022, there will be a mass participation events run by Galazzo, which is a big events company, but they haven't actually run any big gravel events, nothing like Unbound or Steamboat. No, not that we could see. There will be a Gravel World Championships and a Gravel World Series consisting of events that allow participants to qualify for the big one. Uh, they've also handily clarified uh, what gravel is, uh, which is a discipline that combines elements of road and mountain bike and takes place mainly on unsealed roads, brackets, gravel, forest tracks, farm roads, cobbles, etc. Well, I'm glad we cleared that one up. Absolutely. See, it is a good thing the UCI are getting involved. We now have a clear definition of what gravel is. No, but in, in all seriousness, more info is coming soon on where they'll be and how it'll all work. But it will be interesting to see how this shifts. It will, yeah. Or if it shifts at all, in fact. Mm. I mean, in the first place, I think having a World Series is a good thing. Of course, there are gravel events all over the world at the moment, but the US definitely dominates, doesn't it, in terms of the big ones and all of the headlines. I think in terms of whether or not it could be a success, my thoughts are mainly it's going to come down to the quality of the courses for these new events. If they're good, then no one's going to care who organises it. Racers will just have an awesome time. If they're crap, though, then it'll just be a giant pile on, and I suspect the UCI will be the scapegoat. The good bit is that that's the easy bit. Well, you'd think anyway. Certainly easier than being cool and getting the right post-race trendy beers. In. Some of us, some of us find that the easy bit as well, man. Uh, yeah. Any, anyway, anyway, what will be interesting is how they deal with the rules. Something me and Dan were talking about a few months ago. Well, yeah, I think you guys were saying, weren't you, that, that even some gravel racers are calling for more rules, right? Particularly, I think it comes down to having separate starts for men and women races to make it fairer so that you don't get some women with male domestiques, like dragging them around. Now, for the 20 or so people that are contesting the win, I guess that's a good thing to make it as fair as possible. But for everyone else in the mass participation side of things, well, probably not so much. 
What we are waiting for, though, with bated breath, is rules on sock height, bar width, tyre width, and the minimum bike weight. Surely, surely not even the UCI are naive enough to suddenly come on in there and create a whole load of new gravel bike rules. I mean, surely, as long as it doesn't have a motor, Anything goes, right? Well, apart from aero bars Good as well. Point. No yeah. aero bars. Anyway, a lot of people are feeling a little bit nervous about this, but should we try and put it into context? What does this mean for gravel racing? Is it going to stay exactly how it is for now? Awesome mass participation events with just a handful of very, very fast people right at the very front trying not to seem like they're taking it too seriously. No, they can carry on just as they are, being fun, cool and inclusive. Yeah, what hopefully the UCI World Series will mean is that more people around the world can get into gravel racing and that actually we will see more of the top bike racers going shoulder to shoulder more of the time in more cool places. I mean, that's the hope anyway. Will it get more serious though? Well, yes, probably a bit, won't it? But let's not kid ourselves. For the tiny minority, gravel racing is already serious. They're just trying hard not to make it seem like that anyway. So is it a bad thing? No. Is it a good thing? We're not sure yet. Will the Gravel World Series work? Well, yes, if the course is good enough. Yeah, let's hope the courses are good enough because uh, I think it'd be cool. Yeah. Anyway, one rider who is currently training exceedingly hard for it is Dan Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not strictly true. Uh, but he is rapidly getting fitter, we believe, as he's halfway through his Zwift Academy. Over to Dan for an update. I'm at home for workout two. I finally set up my pain cave. I'm sure you're all sick of hearing that term after lockdown last year, but uh, I'm finally up and running. I'm well, Zwift on the go and it is peak VO2 intervals today. I will show you the aftermath of peak VO2 intervals later on. Uh, I have reduced my FTP down to a more realistic 230 watts, so hopefully I'll be able to complete it all at 100% this time. Uh, but before you see that aftermath, I'm first going to speak to one of the Zwift coaches who decides on the winners at the end of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, Please allow me to introduce you to Stephen Gallagher, who is a part of Dig Deep Coaching and along with Dan Fleeman, uh, one of the coaches who decides who is going to get to the Zwift Academy Finals and ultimately the winners as well. Uh, beyond that, he happened to be the best man at my wedding. Uh, so with that in mind, Stephen, you know me so well, we're such good mates. I presume I'll get preferential treatments and be on Alps in Phoenix next year. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm not sure which I'm most proud of, but uh, we'll, we'll maybe won't uh, insult you too much too early. But uh, yeah, as for your contract, um, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to allow you to be part of that process just because of the poor performances in your in your first part of your career. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for trying. No worries. I thought you were going to say my first test, but the first part of my career. Right. <laughs> uh, anyway, what I wanted to ask you today is. Now, obviously, for a lot of us, including me, this is all about getting fitter and getting something out of it, as opposed to having any hope of going pro by the end of it. So what are all of us mm -hmm. going to get out of this? And what's the purpose of the two different blocks that we're currently doing? Yeah, so Zwift Academy has evolved over the years. And, you know, um, we've obviously had a very strong talent ID focus over the last number of years. And, um, you know, this year, we wanted to really take people on, on a journey and in the sense that you know we have a start process like a start event which is your uh, baseline ride and then we take you over the number of weeks and months that we go to the finish line ride and over uh, two very dis distinctive training blocks that we help you improve from that baseline to the finish line. So the finish line, you're obviously seeing the fruits of your hard work and, and the labour that you've put in um, and you're able to see tangible results of your fitness. That's the key of, of this year's event and allowing people to see the process of going from A to B and being part of a journey together. We're talking of improvements and fruits of our labour. Given that you know me very well and my background, what sorts of gains would you expect to see from me in my finish line test versus my baseline? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you haven't hidden the fact that you've come from not a great fitness or you haven't been doing a lot of training. You've been injured from your running and, you know, trying to get back into things. So, you know, you are coming from a, a, a let's say a lower, a lower fitness level. Um, but the benefit for you is that 
the, let's say the muscle memory of their many years of training and racing at, at the highest level uh, you know should be retained and will be retained once you get back into activating those muscle groups and probably doing um, intensities that you maybe haven't done in quite a long while now um, with that maximal aerobic work where we're really going deep for those you know two minutes or three minutes you know there's a, a mechanical aspect of that as well where you know you're putting a lot of stress on your body and your tendons and ligaments that maybe you haven't been used to in a while as well so you'll get an improvement from that but also that first three workouts where you know you're really bringing your heart rate up you know your, your breathing is is you know at its very ceiling as well um, and I would believe that you would see gains quite quick from that and a lot of people see gains quite quick from a lot of that high capacity glycolytic work. I was expecting you to say at the beginning of that answer that there is a lot of room for improvements they are expecting some quite big ones but yeah we'll see we'll see shortly. Didn't want to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> right thanks for your time mate I will speak to you soon. All done. I'll put it up to 105% on the last interval uh, and it felt quite good much better than the first workout where I did a positive split went out hard, couldn't sustain it uh, this one I guess I did a negative split lowered my FTP by 10 watts managed to raise it slightly yeah, which always makes you feel a bit better completing the workout, doesn't it? so all good onwards and upwards Okay, time now for GCN Inspiration, that part of the show where we pick out some of our favourite photos or videos that you've been uploading onto the GCN app over the previous seven days and we'll award a prize to all three. Starting in third place, winning a GCN red mug with this one from El Campo. Look at that photo, man. That is that cool. That is nice. Apparently, even the morning commute can be inspiring at 7 a.m., descending into the sunrise that cuts through the early morning fog in Richmond Park. Um, I'd argue that you're climbing there uh, rather than descending, but <laughs> Richmond Park. Now, I only know one Richmond Park, because, but that doesn't look like central London to me. Surely not. Can, can those of you that ride around Richmond Park just, just clarify whether that is indeed <laughs> London? Because that's... That is a lovely shot, isn't it? Yeah, we don't want any liars getting some no. inspiration. It's probably Richmond somewhere else, isn't it? Yeah, could be. Virginia, uh, maybe? <laughs> and in second place this week, winning a GCN Kiwi Cup, a bobble hat and an Elite Fly Duo Pack water bottles is Max Bike Italy. And a trip to Col Nivellet. <laughs> Look at that. Very beautiful. Wowzers. So Ollie and Hank and Alan filmed on the Col Nivellet. Uh, a few years back now, and they didn't get up there because there was too much snow on the ground. Really? That looks super cool, doesn't it? I wonder how long it took to get up there. It's a big old climb. I isn't mean, it? It's worth it for that picture. Absolutely, yeah. Right, it's not the winner though. Oh no, first place winning a GCN Classic t shirt in white and black, a GCN Black Core Trucker cap, nice, a GCN Core Red sweatshirt, and a GCN Gradient Ass Saver getting towards that time of year, ladies and gents. Um, anyway, it's Drewster uh, with this. Look at that shot. That's amazing, isn't it? That's, uh, not, that's not for me. Well, I'm not riding on that. That's that's what the UCI are currently calling etc. on their new uh, classification of gravel. It very um, well could be. Apparently, uh, they found this old rail bridge at 11,000 feet up between Winter Park and Nederland in Colorado. Fun to ride across until the wind picked up. Oh my word. Oh. That does look so cool, doesn't it? That's very sketchy. I like it. I A deserving winner. <laughs> well, yeah, nice it's too picture. Scared. Is it a nice picture? Don't. I wouldn't ride on it. No. All right. Uh, well, anyway, that is. those are your three winning photos yeah. for this week. Hopefully you are feeling duly inspired. Uh, if you've got some amazing photos or need videos, then make sure you're uploading them to the GCN app where not only can everyone else uh, give you loads of likes and comment on them, but you are in with a shout at winning one of three great prizes next week as well. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we'll start with the news that Rwanda is going to be the official host of the 2025 World Road Race Championships. Now, I say officially because it has been the cycling world's worst-kept secret for years, but still... 
It's great news. It is indeed. And it'll be the first time that an African nation has hosted the Road World Championships. And what a venue Rwanda is going to be. Kigali, which is the capital, has given us some incredible scenes from the Tour of Rwanda year after year. And you've got to think that this will be more of the same, only bigger and better. And I'll be honest, I'd never really thought of riding my bike in Rwanda before, but I watched the Josh Ibert film on GCN Plus and it totally blew me away. Rwanda looks amazing and it's on my bucket list for sure. Uh, and actually speaking of first four African cyclists, Biniam Gourmet of Eritrea took that nation's first ever medal at the Road World Championships last week as well with a silver in the under 23 men's race. Mm, brilliant. So more cycling news now in the US and more specifically in Chicago. Local authorities have announced that they will be installing 100 miles of bike lanes over the next two years. Well, that is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of success stories for cycling in Chicago. Firstly, the number of people that are cycling to work has doubled in recent years. And before you say, well, it's just COVID, that number is only increasing, which is cool. Their bike share scheme is gaining more and more popularity. There were over 800,000 rides per month in July and August. Again, that's only going one way. And then lastly, that 100 miles you're talking about, Manon, yeah. that's going to create a total of 400 miles of bike paths in Chicago, which sounds great, doesn't it? Wow, well done, Chicago. More of that, please. Well, yeah, I think cyclists around the world are trying hard. News from Mumbai in India, where 150 cyclists took to the streets on World Car Free Day, which was last week. I missed that one. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm quite annoyed that I missed that one, because actually that would have been great. And yeah. I wholly applaud. But anyway, they took to the streets um, to try and show that cycling is a viable transport alternative in what's frankly one of the world's most polluted cities. Wow, that's brilliant. Mm. Um, some more cycling news now. And the finished city of Turku is taking part in an experiment to see how they can get more people into cycling. And there's three different methods that they're trialling. And the first one is e-bike chargers with fire extinguishers inside them. Which sounds weird yeah. to me. The second is secure bike garages where you can park your bike for up to 48 hours for just a euro, which sounds cool. Now we're talking. And the last one is a data-driven scheme where they analyse cycling habits based on bike parking to see the cycling uptake. That's right. See what affects it, like rain, you'd imagine. All eyes will be on Turku in the next couple of years to find out the secret of getting people into bikes. And I'll tell you what, Manuel, if it's e-bike charging cabinets with built-in sprinkler fire extinguisher systems, I will eat my hat, yeah. but um, watch this space. Uh, now, our friends at Kamut have been spearheading what is dubbed the first ever endurance cycling challenge exclusively for women. It's the brainchild of one of their ambassadors, Leah Wilcox, and it's the famous 700 kilometres Torino Nice Rally cycling route. Yeah, 20 women from seven countries are taking part. And quite frankly, man, aren't after they saw how much you enjoyed your first taste of camping. I am surprised that you did not get the call up. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Hello, this is Man on Cam. Um, turns out gravel riding and backpacking is actually quite hard. You have to carry stuff. I mean, Jenny didn't even let me bring that much stuff, but it's heavy, hard work, underestimated it. Man on Cam over. Some big news from the GCN shop this week. We've got three new GCN Castelli Competizione jerseys launching. We've got a red diamond one. We've also got a red and yellow one. And we've got a turquoise and lime one, I believe. And you can get uh, matching socks. Oh, even better. Too. Yeah, you um, do have to have matching socks when cycling. I think you do, yeah. really, don't you? Um, and the jerseys are, of course, available in men's and women's cuts too. Uh, now. There is a huge film launching on GCM Plus this week. You'll remember that Hank and Mark Beaumont raced the length of the UK in, uh, in a relay, a two-person relay. Well, they were back on the same route, Land's End, John O'Groats, but this time with a tandem in order to try and break the Guinness World Record. And you know how everybody always says, oh, you know, try and break Hank. Well, yeah, you're going to want to watch this one, yeah. Just to let you know, you might see a side of me that you probably haven't before just because, like, I'm terrified. 
I absolutely petrified of this challenge. At some point, you've got to ask yourself, like, how far do you want to go? And for what is the cost? It's now time for hack forward slash bodge. Oh, slow one. Sorry, yeah. Uh, right, uh, first up, we've got this from KG26. A man on his bike with his bike spotted this gentleman on a highway. He's taking two wheel life to heart. That is very cool, isn't it? I like that. Yeah, Although, rate that. I'm not entirely sure it's a hack or a bodge because that's like a real thing, isn't it? You, you're pretty sure you can get motorbike ra- yeah, I think you can. bike yeah. racks. Um, but I like that. Still thumbs gonna up. hack it. Yeah. yeah, thumbs up. 79% of you also agreed. Next one is in from Rory and always bring zip ties. And basically, the thread in his cranks to put his pedal in had rounded off. So he zip tied the pedal to his shoe and then he could shove it into the crank. And hold it in with his shoe? Yeah. I'd like to see in action how long it'll stay stay in there for. Well, he says he got him home. Fair play. Now that is 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 an acceptable use of a zip tie. I'm okay with that. I could do with trimming the zip ties, but... Well, no, because then they get really sharp. Really, really sharp. Oh, is sharp. that a problem? Oh, my goodness me, yeah. The end of a zip tie that's been cut is possibly the sharpest thing known to humanity. It's like a, like diamond cutters, but made out of zip ties. Wow. Anyway, uh, I think that's... I've got to say, that's a hack. Yeah. If anything gets you home, however rudimentary, it's a hack from me. I wouldn't have thought of that. I would have started walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah. 75% of you lot were a bit... Mina, you thought that was a bodge. I but, reckon they um, just didn't read the, read the whole caption and they just saw it and were like... Oh. It does look pretty bad, doesn't it? But anyway, it's just the zip ties aren't cut. There we go. Good thinking, Rory. Right, uh, next up, we've got this one um, from Stella K. Creative handlebar end caps. Yes, indeed. Look closely. Those are champagne uh, bottle tops. How cool yeah. is that? Uh, they're not entirely sold. Um, uh, unless you pop these champagne bottles on top of the podium, they shouldn't belong on a bicycle. So, um, yeah, I felt like, imagine being on the drops and that just digging into your hand. It just yeah, they wouldn't can. be the most comfortable thing. No, fair enough. But they look quite cool. I'm going to go bodge. You're bo- I'm bodging. I'm going to hack, actually. I just, uh, you know, if, if it's on your city bike, a little bit different, a bit quirky, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> whoa, check me out. Now, I, yeah, go on, we're split then. Um, 39% of you lot say hack, 61% of you lot agree with Manon, say that's a bodge. Uh, next up, we've got MD McCracken. Um, a battery bottle, not a bid on, not pretentious. And basically, went on a really long ride with GoPros and wanted to charge them, and I rate that. Yeah, so anyway, is... we've got like a, we've got like an old bead on that fits in a cage, but then it's cut away to fit an enormous battery pack. That is a big, big battery pack. That is right. Although they say uh, the battery weighs less than a large full water bottle. Oh. So there we go. Um, well, I tell you what, it's neatly done, and it has solved their problem, which is running a GoPro for a really long time. So I've got to say hack. Yeah, I'm going to say hack. Is that a little bit of foam to protect? Ooh, nice. Protect yeah. It? I wouldn't want ride. one on my bicycle. I'm going to put it out there and say that. But no, but if you, if you're on a really long ride and needed the the charge, if you needed batteries, not water, there we go. Yep, 66% yeah. say hack as well. So I think that's yeah. fair. I think that's absolutely fair. Uh, right then, next up, we've got this one from Wayno, New Zealand. Um, recycle had to find something to do over lockdown, making use of old parts sitting around. Um, Crikey, that's like a Frankenstein of a light, isn't it? We've got an old crank on there. We've got uh, what looks like the seat clamp from the top of a seat post, plus an old wheel with cassette and quick release still attached, and then um, and then a light bulb hanging from the top. Be- beautiful execution. It, do- it does look very nice, but could use that cassette for something else. Yeah, it's kind of slightly release. gives me nightmares in that, you know, there's so many broken bits of bike. But yeah, very classy looking light. Yeah. Um, what are you going to say? I'm going to go hack. It does take some skill to produce something like that. I think so. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with but you. A there. lot of effort being put into that. And it's a very expensive light now when you can add up everything. All those components. Uh, DT Swiss 240 hub, SRAM red cassette. Yeah, that is like... Um, that's an exclusive yeah, light. Um, anyway, well done. Thanks for sending that one in. Um, we've got this one from uh, Monev. 
confused handlebars. Uh, not mine. I was riding to an ice cream shop and saw this locked up by a park where I live. Um, not entirely sure how they ride this. Yeah, it's a good point, actually. I've seen people ride around like this as well. This is scary because I was looking at it again. Well, of course, they've just like, it's just a front wheel spun round. But no, because if you spin it around again, then your brakes are the wrong way. I, I am literally gobsmacked at this. I, um, it, it looks like a Charles bike as well. It looks pretty small. Or is that just the angle? I don't know. That is a massive bodge as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Uh, terrifying. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Um, weirdly, 19% of you thought that was a hack. So, um, Interesting. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what, what you lot are on. That is it for Hackle Bodge this week. Uh, keep them coming in, of course. Upload them to the GCN app. We love this part of the show. So, uh, so yeah, look forward to cracking on some more next week. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. It's unlikely to be yellow. That is the only one that we've got <laughs> kicking around in here for some reason. Um, as I say, much coveted. Uh, anyway, before we get you started on this week's caption, of course, is the results from last week where we gave you this image of Filippo Ganna. Manon, who is the winner? The winner is Bike Tribe with the caption, I can't believe I won. I'm gonna cry. Get it? I'm gonna. Filippo gonna Ganna. cry. I, quite, I like that one. I like that, that one a lot. That is very good. Bike Tribe, a well worthy done. winner. Okay, this week. We've got this uh, this image of Julian and Philippe. There's a lot going on here, Manon. There is a lot. There's there's UCI, there's cameraman, there's fluoro guy, yeah. and of course the winner. Okay, right. <clears throat> Shall I go? Hit us. The UCI escorted Julian and Philippe from the scene of his contravention of the celebration rules 1.2.034. Yeah. Yeah. Short, sweet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> if you think you can do better, get involved in the comment section down below. Now it's time to go through some of our favourite comments that you guys have been leaving under our videos. And we'll start with um, my gravel race video. Ooh, good one. Was it a good one? I, I really enjoyed that. I, Genuinely, yeah. yeah. It was awesome. Thank you. Uh, the first one is from Miwon. You know when things get serious, when you see a full jar of Nutella within Manon's reach. Yeah, I did Why was the Nutella in that video? I missed that. A bit of Snacks in the race and a pre race snack. In the race? A jar of Nutella? I, I had intention of eating some brioche and Nutella, but I never actually ate it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Um, Simon Go said uh, that was awesome. Uh, Manon deserves a weekly inspiration prize. Makes you want to get out and ride. Hey, well, Do you yeah. say a water bottle, please? Well, yeah, I'm not sure we can stretch to that, Simon. Go, but go, um, go to be fair, it made me want to go out and ride, and I already love gravel riding. Yeah, so, gravel, uh, gravel riding is pretty awesome. That was good. And so. then Quarky said, um, Wait a go, Manon, is there any footage of the crash? And I did notice. Yeah, well, no, I didn't because it was on the last lap. I'd already dropped my GoPro, so I was like, I'm just going to put it in my pocket and get to the finish because you know, I just stopped and get it. But I have got this bad boy. Oh! I don't know if you can see it, but Ouch. this is... Oh my God! This is like eight, eight, nine days old now, and it's still pretty hefty. So Ooh, there's the evidence. <laughs> what, what, what was that? What, what do you mean? What, what's what it? caused the bruise? I, I'm not sure because I kind of went that way. I don't know if I hit hit something on the way down. Wow, but um, sore. Yeah. Well, there we go. We have no footage of the crash, but we do have evidence. Pretty awful bruise. Quite, evidence. Yeah. Um, right then. Um, yours, you had a double header this weekend. With, I did. Uh, with, full weekend of Manon. Bike rafting as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, John Kinder said Jenny and Manon are a great double act. Can't wait to see what else Jenny has up her sleeve for Manon. I bet you can wait. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking this, what we can do next, so any ideas, please send them in. Stick them in the comments, yeah. guys. Uh, next up, uh, we can't drop the dropped like Ollie jokes ever. When I when I sit down with my grad grandkids when I'm older, I'm going to tell them the story of how Ollie got dropped. Oh, Quite like that one. Brutal. It's going, it's going down history, isn't it? It is, it yeah. is, unfortunately. Uh, Pete Wilmot said that was a joy to watch. Jenny's smiling face, even in the bracing wind and rain, is certainly a superb advert for bike packing anywhere, especially in the UK. Superb film, everyone. Thank you again. I don't think anything will ever crack Jenny. No. Like, no nothing phases that woman. No, she's, no. yeah, she's quite remarkable, isn't she? And the last comment, uh, I'm glad it was man on and not man overboard. See what you Get did it? there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like it. Um, yeah, that was super cool, actually, that vid. 
um, it was a place, you know. yeah, great experience. Um, so coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday, we've got 10 most used cycling expressions. On Thursday, we've got the tech show. And then on Friday, I'm going to do a little video on six things I learned from my very first gravel race. Nice. Um, on Saturday, we have got uh, the first video in a bit of a... Well, it's not zero to hero because it's featuring Freddie, who many of you will know from the beginner amateur pro videos. So Freddie is going to be training up for the Mallorca 312, which is a 312 kilometer sportif around Mallorca. Um, so it's going to be a bit of an introduction to Freddy and a bit of uh, scene setting about what he's going to be taking on. So make sure you stay tuned for that one because that's super cool. And then on Sunday, uh, it is the story of my 400 mile ultra endurance race, which um, which much like Manon's bruise, I have still not recovered. And that I'm was looking eight days forward ago to this as well. one. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yes. I'm a masochist, but yes, I did. Fair play, that is impressive. I did. Um, yeah. Right, that brings us to the end of the GCN show, Manon, for this yeah, week. Yeah, it does. Thanks for having me on. Well, pleasure as always, Manon. Um, and next week um, is, of course, out in Mallorca. It's a GCN show live because it's the Mallorca event, um, which is super cool. Well excited for that one. Um, in the meantime, by the way, um, one last bit of news. Uh, we've got a GCN team in the Zwift Racing League coming up. Um, first race uh, is tonight, actually, if you're watching the GCN show on the day it comes out. Uh, a team time trial with, uh, with Alex and Ollie among oh, other people. The tech duo. So watch this space. <laughs> Will we'll Ollie get happens. dropped? <laughs> well, I suspect it's Ollie not going to be Ollie getting dropped, but um, we've also got triathlete in the mix as well. But cool. I'll say no more. Uh, right, thank you very much, everyone. We will see you next week.